Hello, dear students, and welcome to our virtual classes. My name is Emma Matrinyuk, and I'm English language teacher. And today we are going to discuss a topic entitled Cultural Diversity, Challenges and Opportunities in Modern Societies. Okay, so look at first slide. Tell us what do you see. Think about the words that you see. It's culture, people, ethnicity, nation, diversity, traditions, beliefs, and you can continue the list. They are all connected with our today's discussion. Before we proceed to our discussion, look at these interesting gestures and tell to yourself what do these gestures mean. They might be very familiar to you, aren't they? So, the first gesture is the OK gesture. By the way, in the USA, in most of the English-speaking world, it means that everything is OK. It means that everything is nice and good. In Japan, it means money. In Brazil, it's considered to be a rude gesture, even an insult, so for you to know. By the way, in the 1950s, Richard Nixon visited Brazil and famously flashed the OK sign to a waiting crowd who responded with boos. The next gesture, the V gesture, that probably many, many of you use. In the United States, it means peace and victory. In China, Japan, South Korea, Taiwan and Thailand, it cute pose when being photographed. However, in UK, Australia and South Africa, the same gesture with the back of the hand facing the other person is considered to be extremely insulting. And the next gesture, the loser gesture. That means loser in the USA. In China, it indicates the number 8, which is considered a lucky number. And knowing how to sign numbers is especially useful when bargaining in China. So, the signs are very interesting and they're very popular. And we come to our today's aims. Today in class we will study the new definitions. We will explain the terms and notions. We will discuss the essence of the given issues. We will learn the vocabulary on the topic. We will find out the important hints on behavior. We will understand the importance of cultural diversity. And we will start with the vocabulary. Look at this picture. We have a lot of words. Bias, multiculturalism, to foster, cross-cultural, culture in general, diversity, to empower, and many others. And of course, we will talk about these words and we will try to match them with the definitions. In the table you see the words to foster, cross-cultural, multiculturalism, to acknowledge, to empower, bias as noun and diversity. So let's match them with their definitions. Number one, relating to or including several cultures. It's multiculturalism. Number two, to promote the growth and development of, it's to foster. Number three, to give or delegate power or authority. And it's to empower, you are right. Number four, to admit the existence or reality or truth of something. It's to acknowledge. Number five, a preference or an inclination. It's bias. Number six, to comparing or dealing with two or more different cultures, cross cultures. Number seven, the quality of being made of different elements, forms, kinds or individuals. This is diversity. Okay, and we come to the word diversity, cultural diversity. It is cultural diversity or multiculturalism, a way to describe the presence of many different cultures in our country and world. It recognizes the presence and value of the characteristics of the many ethnic groups around the world and across our nature. 
Cultural diversity means that we are all living in one and the same world where people are different but they are the same at the same time. Now we have a quotation, an anonymous one. Diversity is the one true thing we have in common. So celebrate it every day. And it probably refers to each of everyone. Okay, now let's answer a range of questions. What language do you speak? What is your religion? What holidays do you celebrate in your family, in your country, in your community? What is your racial identification? What is your ethnic identity? What is your culture? Okay, so who I am? If I have answered all these questions, I can identify myself and the world I'm living in. And culture is closely connected with this. Culture is that which shapes us. It shapes our identity and influences our behavior. Culture is our way of being. More specifically, it refers to the shared language, beliefs, values, norms, behaviors, and material objects that are passed down from one generation to the next. Okay, now let's talk a little bit deeper about cultural diversion. What does it mean to be culturally diverse? The term culturally diverse is often used interchangeably with the concept of multiculturalism. But multiculturalism is defined as a system of beliefs and behaviors that recognizes and respects, that acknowledges and values, and that encourages and empowers everybody in all the parts of the world. One of the famous sociologists, Dr. Caleb Rusado, who specializes in diversity and multiculturalism, described seven important actions involved in the definition of multiculturalism. It's actually important to understand the word multiculturalism because it means the multitude of different cultures. And these seven important actions are recognition, respect, acknowledging, valuing, encouraging, empowering and celebrating. All these moments, all these issues can be attributed to any person in every culture. The most important thing is that we are to follow them. Now, why is cultural diversity a good thing? Culture is the lens with which we evaluate everything around us. We evaluate what is proper or improper, normal or abnormal, through our culture. If we are immersed in a culture that is unlike our own, we may experience culture shock and become disoriented when we come into contact with a fundamentally different culture. People naturally use their own culture as the standard to judge other cultures. However, passing judgment could reach a level where people begin to discriminate against others whose ways of being are different than they were. Essentially, we tend to fear that which we don't understand, and this is true. We always fear that we don't know. Okay. Cultural diversity is important because our country, workplaces and schools increasingly consist of various cultural, racial and ethnic groups. We can learn from one another, but first we must have a level of understanding about each other in order to facilitate collaboration and cooperation. Learning about other cultures helps us understand different perspectives within the world in which we live and help dispel negative stereotypes and personal biases about different groups. That's why it is very important to be aware about the representatives of other cultures. 
In addition, cultural diversity helps us recognize and respect ways of being that are not necessarily our own, so that as we interact with others, we can build bridges to trust, respect, and understanding across cultures. Furthermore, this diversity makes our country a more interesting place to live, as people from diverse cultures contribute language skills, new ways of thinking, new knowledge, and different experience. Think about a group of people from different parts of the world, from different countries, from different communities. Everyone is unique and each together are forming a different experience. And this is very important. Just imagine yourself in a group of diverse people. It's interesting, it's important and it's fruitful. And now let's think how can you support cultural diversity? You can increase your level of understanding about the cultures by interacting with people outside of your own culture. Meaningful relationships may never develop simply due to a lack of understanding. So we need to interact with people, right? Yes, we need to avoid imposing values on others that may conflict or be inconsistent with cultures other than your own. Then, when interacting with others who may not be proficient in English, recognize that their limitations in English proficiency in no way reflects their level of intellectual functioning. And indeed, the more languages we know, the easier communication is, but it doesn't necessarily mean that we know all the languages perfectly well, but at the same time we try to communicate these foreign languages. And recognize and understand that concepts within the helping profession, such as family, gender roles, spirituality and emotional well-being, vary significantly among cultures and influence behavior. Yes, if we think about all these points deeper, we understand that we need to interact and understand each and everyone, representing different community, different race, different culture. Look at this picture, please. Look at these very famous, world-known faces. Each of them was a prominent figure that moved the minds move the races and move the nations and even move the hearts of people. What can I do? It is probably one of the questions that we need to put to ourselves. And to have a fruitful communication in multicultural world, we need to know how to do it. Okay, now we have more information on how we can support cultural diversity. Cultural diversity is indeed a diversity of everything, a mixture of all the spheres of life. Within the workplace, educational setting and clinical setting, advocate for the use of materials that are representative of the various cultural groups within the local community and the society in general. Intervene in an appropriate manner when you observe others engaging in behaviors that show cultural insensitivity, bias or prejudice. This is very important to accept people in different environments. Be proactive in listening, accepting and welcoming people and ideas that are different from your own. This is about how to understand others and how to present yourself. And now please look at this slide. Look and see that we are all different, but are we all equal? Yes, we are different in color of the skin, the color of our eyes or hair, statute, weight, height, gender, male or female, our age, how we look, what is our appearance, whether we are happy or not, where we have disability, ability, where we have our human rights protected or not, where we have problems or not. But we can have abilities, we can have hobbies, vocations, interests, 
we can go to the cinema or to a cafe, we can have a lot of opportunities, we can have the right for education, for orientation and race and talents and this makes us equal. So the more diverse world we are living in, the more interesting and happy it is. That's why we can say that we are all different, but we are all equal and we live in a diverse world. Cultural diversity thus supports the idea that every person can make a unique and positive contribution to the larger society because of rather than in spite of their differences. Imagine a place where diversity is recognized and respected. Various cultural ideas are acknowledged and valued. Contributions from all groups are encouraged. People are empowered to achieve their full potential and differences are celebrated. And this picture, of course, demonstrates these wonderful worlds. So far for today, dear students. Hope you found a lot of new and important information in this topic. And welcome to our English classes to learn more about cultural diversity in the future. See you next time.